welcome to Kingdom Compliance with Dr. James Bruton, offering biblical guidelines, principles of the kingdom of heaven that will help you stay tuned in to the frequency of heaven and reap the benefits that accompany you as a citizen of the kingdom, the best the king has to offer. Today's topic is the kingdom of justice. I believe that kingdom justice is integrity of character. In other words, kingdom justice adheres strictly to the moral code of truth that is the Bible and administers it from the very nature, power, and glory of God in fairness and without partiality. Therefore, kingdom justice is the rule of God's moral law in society. It prevails as God's standard and becomes a reality on earth when the laws of men testify to and reflect the truth of God. When human law differs from God's law, you will still have a type of justice, but you won't have divine justice. The difference is that human justice is flawed. It is unfair, partial justice, because humankind is sinful by nature. So in order for true justice to prevail on earth, human laws must reflect God's law, his eternal justice, in order for kingdom justice to prevail. Wiktionary defines justice as the state or characteristic of being just or fair, the ideal of fairness, impartiality, especially with regard to punishment of wrongdoing. From the law first mentioned in the Bible, the word justice is used in Genesis chapter 18, verse 19. But let's read from verse 16 through verse 19. Then the men rose from there and looked toward Sodom, and Abraham went with them to send them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am doing, since Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? For I have known him, in order that he may command his children and his household after him, that they keep the way of the Lord, to do righteousness and justice, that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. The Hebrew word used in this text for justice is sedalkal and is taken from the primary root word sodak, which means rightness and rectitude. Objectively, it means justice. Morally, it means virtue. And figuratively, it means prosperity. It means to make right in a moral or forensic sense, to cleanse, clear self, do justice, be justice, and turn to righteousness. The word justice means to prescribe the right way, to do things in an appropriate way. Justice has to do with equity and judgment without regard for a person's status. It is the equitable application of God's moral law to all people without partiality. Let's read this from Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 17. You shall not show partiality in judgment. You shall hear the small as well as the great. You shall not be afraid in any man's presence, for the judgment is God's. God has declared that he does not show partiality in his judgments. Romans chapter 2 verse 11 says, For there is no partiality with God. Also, God has declared that he is no respect of persons and judges our works according to truth. Let's read from Romans chapter 2 verses 1 through 6. Therefore you are inexcusable, O man, whoever you are who judge. For in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. But we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. And do you think this, O oh man, you who judge those practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? But in accordance with your hardness and your impenitent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to his deeds. So how does God judge? He judges justly, according to one's deeds, and in the light of what one knows. In other words, the judgment of God will be according to one's real character, because true justice is integrity of character. God's nature is one of justice. Let's read from Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 1 through 4, where Moses writes about the truth and justice of God. Give ear, O heavens, and I will speak. And hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. 
Let my teaching drop as the rain, my speech distill as the dew, as raindrops on the tender herb and as showers on the grass. For I proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are justice, a God of truth and without injustice, righteous and upright is he. No one will escape God's justice. He is the righteous judge whom every person must ultimately face. Let's read from Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed to us by those who heard him, God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will? God's word is steadfast and always comes to pass. Without exception, all who disobey God's lesser revelations, the things we have heard and seen but did not believe or obey, will be appropriately punished. God demonstrates kingdom justice through those that are his, those who confess Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord and are born again. God wants unbelievers to know what true justice looks like through our demonstration of his moral law on earth. This is one aspect of our display of kingdom justice in relation to the secular culture in which we live. Kingdom justice holds fast to its standard, integrity of character. The prophet Habakkuk understood the need for a set standard of moral justice in society because he lived in a day when destruction, violence, strife, and contention existed as the norm. He lived during the reign of King Manasseh, probably the most evil king Judah ever had. However, Habakkuk trusted the integrity and character of God the glory of the person of God, and he trusted in God's salvation. So the immoral society of injustice in which he lived was a burden for him. Let's read Habakkuk chapter 1 verses 1 through 4 to get an idea of just how troubling this unjust society was. The burden which the prophet Habakkuk saw. O Lord, how long shall I cry? And you will not hear. Even cry out to you, violence, and you will not save. Why do you show me iniquity and cause me to see trouble? For plundering and violence are before me. There is strife and contention arises. Therefore the law is powerless and justice never goes forth. For the wicked surround the righteous. Therefore perverse judgment proceeds. That was the norm within the society in which Habakkuk the prophet lived. Yes, it burdened him, and he felt like God could and should do something about it, especially since God is of purer eyes than to behold evil. Habakkuk was appealing to the nature of God as the just, righteous, impartial, and moral creator who is from everlasting. Habakkuk appealed to the integrity of God's character. Let's read verses 12 and 13. Are you not from everlasting, O Lord my God, my Holy One? We shall not die. O Lord, you have appointed them for judgment. O rock, you have marked them for correction. You are of purer eyes than to behold evil and cannot look on wickedness. Why do you look on those who deal treacherously and hold your tongue when the wicked devours a person more righteous than he? The wicked were in control and were making up their own perverse rules because the people of God were at ease. In other words, God's representatives on earth had themselves spurned his laws. Certainly, we can relate to this same scenario being played out in our societies today. As the righteousness of God in the earth, as born-again believers, if we do not take a kingdom stance to preserve God's integrity and character, God's very nature in the earth, the wicked will continue to surround the righteous and justice will continue to be perverted. Sinful people produce sinful or flawed laws. and Righteous people produce righteous laws. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 2 says, When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when a wicked man rules, the people groan. Therefore, in order to have a just society, we must be able to appeal to a standard of justice and morality that is outside of and higher than human experience, one that does not flutter and fluctuate with every change in the wind of opinion. The only standard that meets this qualification is the Bible. 
because it is the authority covenant word of God. The thing that I like about the prophet Habakkuk is that he asked for God's mercy and recovered himself. Yes, he carried the burden of all the perverseness and injustice of his day. However, he refused to give up on the integrity and character of God. He trusted in God's salvation. Let's read the final three verses of Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet and he will make me walk on my high heels. When the prophet looked back upon the experiences of the people of God in former ages and observed what great things God had done for them, he was not only recovered, but filled with holy joy. His resolve was to delight and triumph in the Lord, his strength. Part of God's mandate for born-again believers is to make known the means by which kingdom justice is obtained. However, we cannot have kingdom justice until we, the church, Christ's body, Take on the true kingdom nature and identity as our king. We must align ourselves with God's justice in our life if we want to get our societies right with God. Everybody wants a better society, but not many people are willing to bow before God in his moral code of righteousness. Seeking justice without God is a waste of time because things will continue to deteriorate in proportion to the rate at which God is dismissed from our cultures. When a society marginalizes God, he allows that society to experience self-destruction. Listen to this carefully. When a nation votes for a leader who is morally unworthy, they invite God to use that person as an agent of his judgment and correction against that nation. It really is about personal justice. Justice, integrity of character, must first begin with the individual. Let's read from the Old Testament book of Micah, chapter 6, verse 8. He has shown you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God? That is a great statement of your personal responsibility and mine as citizens of the kingdom of heaven when it comes to administering kingdom justice within the society of our earthly citizenship. We are to uphold the kingdom standard and to act justly with integrity of character. Kingdom justice must be worked out in our society. Let's take a look at Psalm chapter 72, verses 1 through 4. Give the king your judgments, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son. He will judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. The mountains will bring peace to the people and the little hills by righteousness. He will bring justice to the poor of the people. He will save the children of the needy and will break in pieces the oppressor. Every government on earth should function as an instrument of God's kingdom justice. But once a government no longer sees itself as God's agent under his authority, it becomes an island to itself, fulfilling its own humanistic instincts. In this mindset, generally, those with the most money and power make the decisions. This is why we need born-again believers whose lifestyle is Christ-like running for government office. Not someone who simply says he's a Christian but whose lifestyle never display or represent the divine nature, that integrity of character, which epitomizes kingdom justice. Our governments need spiritually mature, Christ-like believers in office who will bring a God-centered orientation of kingdom principles and justice to every area of public life. When unrighteous people rule, there is no moral law. When there is no moral law, there is no presence of God. And when there is no presence of God, there is chaos in our society. God's kingdom justice is the anchor of our society, our culture. Satan keeps trying to knock our culture over by cutting off our anchor, that which gives us stability and keeps us from drifting away from God. It's called integrity of character. That's why fulfilling our kingdom mandate as born-again believers has to do with more than just going to church. It has to do with how we, as the body of Christ, perform on earth, on the job, in the marketplace, in our churches, and in our communities, leveraging our kingdom influence. Being kingdom compliant means bringing the presence 
precepts and power of God to bear on society, pulling our cultures back into an upright position called kingdom justice. And that requires integrity of character. If you would like to refer this episode to others, click on share and subscribe to the YouTube channel to stay up to date when new episodes drop. Thanks for joining me. I'm glad you did. I hope you join me next time for Kingdom Compliance with Dr. James Bruton, where we stay tuned in to the frequency of heaven.